Hello, I'm Dr. Fujian Zain. I'm the originator of the Awareness Integration Theory. Hi, I'm Eileen Manukian, Dr. Eileen Manukian, and uh, I am the person who actually implemented the um, Awareness Integration Theory into education. And uh, we're bringing you uh, and applying the Awareness Integration toward an educational model. Uh, so for me to describe what the awareness integration theory is, is uh, if you can imagine every single human being, adult and children, um, learning and distinguishing between uh, the distinction of what their thoughts is, how they think, what kind of belief system they create, and what type of emotions comes up with for them uh, originally as, um, as a, an emotion that shows up um, mm -hmm. as they get any type of stimulus from outside or the emotions and feelings that show up when some sort of a thought process happens like yes. they you know see a ball or they working with the uh, playing with other children and then they form a belief a form a thought and then that might create a feeling for them how to manage their feeling distinguish between that and their behavior how they're going to act what is their intention what is it that they want to create and how does this way of thinking feeling and behaving and acting actually impact, create a result in their relationship, whether it is toward themselves, toward their mom or dad, or toward other students, their um, siblings or friends. Um, and then how they can create um, an intention of what they want, what kind of actions they need to have, what kind of thought process, what kind of emotions they need to have in order to create the intended result, whatever they think they want to, whether it's going to school, whether it's learning social behaviors, or especially how to regulate their emotions. Exactly. And it's very, very helpful when it comes to younger children who don't know how to regulate their emotions yet. They don't have the skills, they don't actually distinguish between their thoughts and their, their emotions. They don't even know how to name their emotions. They don't know what's the difference between the emotion, between the thought, between the behavior and the outcome of their behavior. This way of organizing, teaching a child as they're growing up with these systems and methods allows a child to feel their own agency, become more independent, um, they have more confidence and self-esteem, and they become more responsible and accountable about how they are putting themselves growing, learning, socializing, and moving forward. And they have a more sense of empowerment uh, because they have the skills as they're moving along. It does. And it also helps them um, ha have more self-confidence, self-efficacy, and it also allows them to understand how others feel and how others, um, the impact of their, their actions on other children or other adults uh, affects their environment and their community and how it comes back to them. And it creates a more of empathic and compassionate citizens as uh, they learn how much of their action might affect others. Most of us grow up only looking at how other people's action affect us and what we feel when others do something. And that kind of thinking promotes kind of a victimized stance that I'm always a victim of my surrounding. While when we teach them the skills of how to look at their own thought, how did they perceive what just happened? And is that, and then reality check that perception of what just happened with what's going on out there. And then look at their emotion, look at what's going on, how to calm themselves down and how to let go of some of the emotions that maybe it's uncomfortable for them. Maybe the sadness, the anger, the anxiety, the shame, the guilt, any of those things to be able to recognize and release them and showing them how to release those and then pick up other emotions like excitement, wonder, happiness, and joy, which most children have naturally. And to be able to take that and then have a goal, like this is what I want to do. And then for them to see what they have to do in order to get that and get excited about getting it and having it. And even if they don't get it, then then look at what is it that didn't work? Do I need to change the thought process? Do I need to change my emotions? Do I need to change what I'm doing in order to get what I need to do? 
or even if I'm not getting it, like I want something from mommy and they're just not going to give it right now and how to deal with my emotions and bring back you know my uh, my connection with everyone around me although I might not feel it be feeling well how to release those emotions and reconnect with myself with my body and with the, the other kids my siblings and my mom and dad it's also very empowering because it puts the child or the adults whoever is using the the theory in the driver's seat I am in charge of my emotions. I know how to manage my emotions. I know how to regulate them. I know this is my thought and I know how to change it. And I know how to shift my behavior and get the, the uh, outcome that I want. It's nothing from outside that is affecting everything that is happening to me. I am the one who's in charge, who's, uh, who has the power to change it, to make it happen, to uh, get the results that I want. It also, uh, because they release their emotions at the moment, it gives them the capacity to focus more on the actions they want to focus. So it creates love of learning. It uh, frees up space in their mind and in their brain to focus on what is important to them. It could be play, it could be learning something, it could be you know, interacting with other kids, but it, it makes them very focused. The amazing thing that happens with this theory is, is that it also uh, works on children with uh, some learning disabilities. It allows them to regulate the parts that on a normal basis they cannot regulate and, and control. It helps them release the um, excitement, the upset, the, the um, immediate anger uh, immediately and then they they can focus like other children maybe a little bit less but they still can focus on what they want to do and how to uh, go ahead and play and socialize with other children and as many of you as teachers already know and people who have been with children know that when your emotions are calm and regulated and open that's when you learn the most so when you want to bring the love of learning the first skill is for any child, any human being to first be able to regulate their emotion and bring it into a space of neutrality and positivity so that the uh, whatever we're learning that stays, it's uh, we pay attention to it and then gets stored and we can receive it and recall it at any point because it, now it has actually gone into our um, short term, short term memory into long term memory. Mm -hmm. and. As it also has associated itself with positivity versus negativity. So um, in the next series of uh, videos, we're going to bring you um, the implementation of this theory in different versions of how uh, children can use it in different formats. So be with us with more videos. Thank you.